Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. This is the Christmas special. Coming up next. Hi, welcome. This is Contra Mundum Pro Mundo. Not me, that's not my name, that's the name of the channel. Uh, being against the world for the sake of the world. Uh, the show, because I do another show where I talk to different people, that's Contra Talk. Contra, just being against, right? Against the world, but for the world. So that's my channel. My name is Richard Henry, and uh, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a pastor of a small Southern Baptist church here in Kentucky, and just trying to be on this platform and use the medium in which the Lord has provided to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim truth. This is the new marketplace, I believe. This is the new public square, and um, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be talking about Christmas. It is Christmas Eve as I record this. This is my, about as festive as I can get. Necks do get cold. It's crazy when you have a scarf. You put one on, you're like, oh, wow, I really needed this. So Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Some Christians, most Christians, we love it, right? And we celebrate it. We might even do Santa and a bunch of other wonderful, great things, Christmas tree and everything else. But some people might say, well, I'm not going to do Santa. Or, you know, the Christmas tree is a bit much. Or we're, we're going we're gonna to do these things, but there's going to be reasons. We'll do Advent. We won't do Advent. Let's do Roman Catholic. What is Advent? Um, lots and lots and lots of things, right? Do we do the wreath? Do we not? Do we bake cookies? Do we do a Christmas Eve service? Uh, there's lots of variations therein. Well, Christmas could be celebrated, and it could not be. And I know, I know, hold on. I'm going to be caught talking about a few things. Celebration of Christmas. I'm going to be talking about um, Santa as well, uh, and and basically the reasons why and why not, and go from there. So we'll look at Santa here in a moment. And just the hodgepodge that Christmas is. Christmas, indeed, is a celebration, right? It's a festival. Uh, but it's also something that a lot of people celebrate very differently around the world. It's not just a matter of we all do something exactly the same way. Now, a lot of Christmas is from England or Germany or Switzerland and that sort of thing. A lot of other things we get from companies like Macy's or Coca-Cola or we see it from movies and we adopt it into the culture. And that's fine. I'm not saying that's bad, but what I want us to do and I want you to do, and this is where against the world, but for the world, against the idea, the world, the Christmas. Well, keep Christ in Christmas. Yes, but we're not commanded by scripture to celebrate Christ's birth, right? Now we have it in Luke, right? And I'm thankful for that. And if we didn't have it in Luke, I'd be curious if we ever had, if we even had Christmas. You never know. Probably not. Should we celebrate it? Should we not? Or could we just embrace it like Halloween, that's just a pagan holiday, quote unquote. It's just a secular whatever. Well, Colossians 2, 16 and 17 and 18. I thought I had it up here. 18. Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. The things which are a mere shadow of of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and worship of angels, taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. Colossians, there's many other passages as well that talk about that. And basically what we're saying is there's freedom of conscience. And because there is no Christmas tree prohibition or eggnog ban or any such thing in the Bible, we can do those things. And many uh, believers, even unbelievers, celebrate and do the same exact thing for Christmas family traditions. And I really would say that that's really mostly what Christmas is in the sense that it's not, it's not something that's necessarily even needed in one sense, right? Because all days are the same except for the Lord's Day. And we worship on Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, We don't have the Jewish festivals and all these other things because those are the former things. Those are the things that were leading up to Christ. Christ, the substance is here. We no longer need Christ or we no longer need those. We need Christ. And this is where the book of Hebrews is amazing, especially the first few chapters of these 
um, helps because a lot of times we just we're just tossed like James like to and fro by every wind of doctrine just you know like in the ocean just bobbing around and we have zero foundation there's nothing that we can actually say or do that really helps us or we can point to and say yeah I don't I don't do that because of x or y uh, we don't do this or that because of these things so point to colossians that's good uh, know that much of the things, Christmas, St. Nicholas, these whole things, we'll talk about Santa in a moment, the red, the green, the eggnog, the lights, the trees, uh, all these things, they're just they're just fun things, right? Like you do on a Super Bowl Sunday if you watch the Super Bowl, although the NFL is pretty. Um, but as an example, before the NFL got woke and stupid. But People do these things, and, and, and further still, a lot of times Christmas, Christmas and Christians will be like, oh, you know, fighting for the tree and fighting for this, and why don't you say Merry Christmas? Well, they're not saying Merry Christmas because they don't want to talk about Jesus. But even if they don't, their lack of saying Merry Christmas or their lack of whatever isn't their problem. Repentance and faith in Christ is their problem. That's their problem. And so lack of saying Merry Christmas and having this. Now, I think it's also lying. I mean, everybody celebrates Christmas or, you know, 90, however many, 5% people in the West, especially celebrate Christmas. And so it's stupid to like hide and be like, well, uh, happy holidays, season greetings. Now, here in Kentucky, most people say Merry Christmas, as you would imagine. Uh, we even drove through a little light display last night, hun hundreds of light displays and all this huge, huge string of cars come through. And there was like five different companies that were citing scripture as their Christmas message because it's like little booths that companies and churches and businesses, people could put up, right? And there was five different ones, like the water district and attorneys and other things. It was great. So, you know, that's, that's wonderful. I don't know if those people are believers or not. In one sense, it doesn't matter. But in another sense, you know, we want them to be, of course, want everybody to be. Turn to Christ. Repent and believe in the gospel. Santa, Santa, Santa. Now, again, Coca-Cola basically gave us the red-coated Santa, you know, the white Santa. And it's like, you know, and then people get bent out of shape, and oh, Santa's black. And he's nothing. Santa's fiction, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to do Santa with your kids, okay, just be prepared to have them at, you know, 8 or 10 years old wonder why you're lying to them. Now, we chose to not do it at all. We have some friends that have done it, several friends that have done not done it. And... Personally, I don't want to lie to my friend, my friends. I don't want to lie to my friends. I don't want to lie to my kids either. Uh, we don't do Easter Bunny. We don't do Tooth Fairy. Now, we still give these things. We still give gifts, and they're still fun stuff. That's all, that's all fun and great and good. But the question is, why do we do what we do? Why are we doing these things? I want you. Why do you do these things? I'm not trying to castigate you if you do Santa. Okay, great. Just know why you're doing it. Have a game plan. Don't just be, well, oh, he's, oh, it's from Santa. You know, and you're working hard and the this and the that, and then you've got the deception with the cookies and the milk and biting this and, and then the reindeer uh, carrot and all these other things. And all of a sudden you're like, well, we're just kind of in this whole web of lies. <laughs> now, most kids aren't wrecked and therefore leave the faith. But I think it's personally, I think it's one more thing to say, Okay, so my parents are talking about uh, this Jesus. He sees you when you're Santa and Jesus. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, be good for goodness sake. That's what Santa is. And, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and everything else. And yet, they talk about Jesus kind of in a similar way. I mean, he's omniscient. He's omnipresent. I mean, is Jesus fake too? Oh, no, Jesus is real. Well, why'd you lie to me about Santa for the last decade? Again, if you do Santa, just have a game plan, right? It's no big deal. You know, it can be a wink and a nod, a tongue in cheek. Uh, we grew up with Santa. My wife did. I did. Um, there's a, I had a professor in seminary, and he, you know, he's older than me. Probably it was like late 70s, early 80s when he was growing up. And, you know, they don't do Santa. They've got like eight kids. And, you know, his mom was like, you know, why don't you do Santa? You know, you're turned out fine. And he's like, I mean, yeah, but there's no way to like measure like, uh, uh, Dr. Stinson, that was his name, with Santa and growing up without Santa. There's no way to measure that, right? So you can't really say, well, you turned out fine. You ate McDonald's four days a week. You're fine. Well, eh, what do you mean fine? How do you define that? But food's not the issue right now. So how are you going to do it? What are you going to do? If you don't have kids, drop a comment. Let me know. Uh, do you do Santa? Do you not? I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be curious. Again, I'm not 
lambasting you or getting insulting you. And I'm not saying I'm high and mighty or anything else. I just don't, I couldn't figure it out and make a way without fibbing, lying, white lies, whatever, tricking, you know, it's just fun. But yeah, we couldn't do it. We do do St. Nicholas representative. We'll see, you know, they see Santa at the mall or on TV or whatever. And it's fun. We want to see this. I'm a Star Wars guy. I like Star Wars. And it's fun to have that suspension of disbelief. But you can have those things and know that it's still a movie. You can have those things and know it's still a fairy tale. But also, we want to know for sure, and this is where atheists have, they're like, well, you're just, you know, Jesus is just Santa for grownups, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but here's the thing, he's not. He's not just Santa for grownups. He actually takes away your sin and gives you new life. And those who have been changed and washed by the blood of the Lamb, you can fully attest to that. He did really exist. And, you know, but he lived like 1,700 years ago. And he didn't live in the North Pole. And he didn't wear red. There's an article I'll link in the description uh, by one of my favorite church historians, uh, Michael Haken. He's actually going to be on the show uh, hopefully next month. So look out for that. Um, number four on this article, he attended the church council at Nicaea. Now, Nicaea 325, this is when they decided the canon. Now, they didn't decide the canon. They firmed it up, or rather, what was already being addressed and believed as scripture was basically coalesced to say this is what we believe. Just like we have the Dallas statement or the Nashville statement or the Chicago statement or the Danvers statement. This is what biblical sexuality is. This is what we believe social justice is. This is what we believe the gospel, you know, bridging these things. This is defining what we say, the Baptist faith and message that the Southern Baptist convention uses, um, that I'm under as it were, all these things are used. We're not making stuff up. We're not creating doctrine. We're just Firming up what we already believe, just like a confession of faith, the London Baptist Confession 1689 or the Westminster. Those are just confessions. They're creeds, as it were, to say this is what we do, the Apostles' Creed. There's another one, on and on and on. And so that's what has happened in church history. It happens even now to say, okay, there's people out there. They're saying that we believe this, but we don't believe this. We believe that. And we want to be firm and clear. This is what we believe. You, Your church, if you go to church, if you're a believer, has a doctrinal statement. I hope. <laughs> Uh, bill, uh, a you know a bill of rights as it were a constitution and you're not making it up you're forming up what's already there so saint nicholas santa claus supposedly was at of course claus klaus that's where we get that we derive it from that um saint nicholas supposedly helped people there's a veggie tales about him and other things too and uh, that's where we kind of get the chimney and the coins, but then there's other stuff that gets mixed in there from Switzerland and Austria and Germany and England and the suit and the reindeer. and It's just kind of this amalgamation. He was not, maybe, maybe not at Nicaea. There's no actual record of him being there. Uh, number five, there's 10 little things about St. Nicholas. Number five, this is my favorite, and I'm really annoyed that it's not probably true, is that he punched Arius in the face, my favorite Christmas story. Um... So Arius was the heretic denying the deity of Christ, similar to how the Jehovah Witnesses do today, and basically saying, you know, Jesus is exalted and created. He's great, but he's not God. And this was actually one of the things that was dealt with at Nicaea. Uh, now there's, again, there's a story that he went in and he punched Arius, the heretic, in the face. And I can just imagine, you know, big fat, you know, the classic Santa Claus and, you know, this meek, mild you know, little uh, Arius or whatever, just just, just knock him down. But it probably didn't really happen because he probably wasn't really there. Anyway. Was Jesus born on December 25th? No, probably not. Was he born wise men? Were there, was he not crying? No, probably not. But Jesus lived. He was sinless, born of a woman, born under the law, that we might be redeemed because we are under the law. Romans 3.25 whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because of the forbearance of God had passed over former sins that were previously committed. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Christ is the answer. So Christmas, no Christmas, regard all days the same except for the, uh, the, the Lord's day. Fullness has come. Jesus has come. So yes, Christmas, you want to celebrate it. Christmas trees, lights, the green, the red, the elves, the stocking, the eggnog, everything. Sure. You want to do Santa? Fine. 
But just know why you're doing these things. Don't just do these things because, well, that's just what we always did. That's the bad. Everybody else does it. That's terrible, terrible argumentation. Don't do things because other people do them. Do them because you find them in scripture. Do them because you're convictional about it. And do them because you want to proclaim Christ in the darkness. Jesus has overcome the world. That's why I'm against it. But I'm for it because I, like you, was once in the world. So go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to hit 200 subs going into the new year. So please help me get that. Help me to make this happen so the content gets pushed to more people and more people will be reminded and hear the gospel of Christ. All right. Take care. And Merry Christmas.